So this is the uh, Git and Debian packaging uh, discussion. It's going to be a panel with uh, our distinguished panelists here, Ansgar and Joey and David. Um, uh, but hopefully will also be a discussion. Um, so if folks have questions or examples or suggestions, uh, feel free to raise your hand. I'll try to keep an eye on the audience and I can run the mic to you. Um, so yeah, give these folks a hand. So uh, thanks everybody for showing up. I hope we'll have lots of questions and interaction. Um, I realized in my first boff that if you give me slides, then I go into teaching mode. And that's OK as far as it goes, I like to think. But it's kind of not boff-like. So we're slide free. We have Gobby. Hopefully, by this point in DevConf, everybody knows how to, does anybody need the uh, address? It's gobby.debian.org. And uh, so please join in and edit. Um, is there anybody who would like to volunteer to take minutes or notes? I mean, I, everybody is welcome to, but those of us sitting up here might get distracted somehow. So. Uh, also, while we're asking for volunteers, can we get a volunteer to relay questions from IRC? You do IRC? Thank you. Thank Probably on uh, hash debconf talkroom one. So, volunteer for taking notes. It's okay. We don't really need notes. Do okay, we? no notes are notes are for the week. We have the video team, so we'll just watch the video if we want to know what happened in this. So great. Um, so if you're like me, um, you have no idea really what Git source packages are, except that they're not allowed in the archive. Um, and so today, Anskar showed me how to use a Git source package. And to, to sort of underline the fact that this isn't a practical how-to session, we're going to show you how to do this thing, which is of no use to you in Debian. Um. <laughs> All right. Thank you, uh, I think. OK. So, it's a bit of a cheat because we tried this package already and it worked. Oh no, and I, I even checked it out. Thanks. Okay, so what do we it's, it's it quite clone blah blah blah. Uh, right. It's okay. Uh, upon your Okay, okay, okay. Joey's more cautious than I am, I just discovered. Okay, so just deb checkout. Nothing fancy here. And that's only because I'm too lazy to remember what the URL is. So this is in the package Perl, one of the package Perl Git repos. I think Ansgar. <laughs> I hear myself immortalized. All right. So let us um, go into this Debian source, uh, Buxy's magic directory, and um, we'll use everybody's second favorite editor, uh, yes. Uh, so, as and and in fact, this line of said could sort of sum up my hopes and dreams, which are so far not realized. Which is, I just want to replace Quilt with Git. Um, not everybody agrees with that, and that's perfectly okay. It wouldn't be Debian if everybody agreed. Okay. Voila. So, um, commit minus m, convert to 3.0 git. Yeah, FTP masters. <laughs> right, okay. I was talking yesterday in a buff about recognizing emotions from phone calls. So, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, so let's. Uh, we're now in the root directory of the package, and we're going to build the package. And we're not going to sign it because, well, 
can't upload it anyway, so what would be the point? Okay. Um, there's some noise. Uh, I mean helpful messages. Uh, stop, yell if I'm going too fast. Um, I mean, nothing too interesting is happening so far. So, what did I do so far? I edited format, and I, then I just ran dpackage build package. As normal, dpackage source directly would work fine. So let's have a look at the DSC file. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And it has only one file in it, which is uh, a git bundle. So um, some of the noise that, that rattled Pi was something about being a native package. And so from dpackage's point of view, these things are kind of native because there's no separate pristine tarball. Um, let's change somewhere else. It's gone. Right, tempfs. Let's have that tempfs discussion. Uh, right, so I could actually just directly clone. It's, uh, it's just a git bundle, but let's try and use the more Debian-y tools, dpackage source minus x. Thank you, ZSH. OK, so uh, what happened? Dpackage source knows how to unpack these things, and it basically just does a git clone. Um, and well, it looks suspiciously like what I started out with. So <laughs> CP minus A might have been a simpler way to do this. You do have the option of giving some git shallow uh, options to uh, dpackage source to, to reduce the amount uh, of history that's included. But if we look at the, okay, so let's look at what branches it included. So just the master branch. Um, and if we look at the tags, oh. hey. Quick question, David. Uh, yes. Just, just to get the context, uh, you're syncing against which JIT repository? So you mean what is origin here? Yes. Origin is the Git bundle. So origin is actually the source package here, and pushing back to it isn't going to do us a lot of work, uh, good. But so Git bundles look just like repositories to Git, uh, and it, you can clone from them. OK. So how did we get the git bundle? Where did that come from? You use the git bundle command. It was uh, dpackage source just runs that to build the bundle, which is effectively the same as a uh, git pack file with a few header information. Could, could you show the, could you show the uh, source directory, just, a, just a button, one level up that was created? Uh, you want the source pack directory where I made the, uh, OK. Yeah, with the long listing. All right, so this is a regular Debian packaging directory that happens to be in a Git repository. Um, and if we look at Debian source format, it says 3.0 Git. Um, and so when I said dpackage build package, I could probably say dpackage source, right? Let's dash B minus U C minus U S. All right, so this is just calling dpackage source uh, as we might in any other uh, package. And then the reason I didn't do that before is because you have to be in the parent directory or something, right? So never mind. We'll go back to. And I'm only doing the building the source package here because mainly that's the part we're interested in. Also, I don't have the dependencies, to, to the build dependencies. OK. So what just happened? So let's, you saw some of the things, uh, delta, blah, blah, blah. That's Git talking to us as it makes the bundle. Why don't you scroll up just a little bit? If only I knew how to do that. Shift page up. Shift page up. Shift page up. Thank you. So I, 
Okay, so here we are, right? Uh, info bundling dash all, counting objects, delta compression, the usual sort of stuff that Git mutters about while it's working. Uh, and then, oh, apparently I'm using XZ compression. That's NSCAR at work, I bet. Well, there's nothing to do with Git, the fact that it's using XZ compression. Um, so can you show the, the files in the parent directory? Yep. Okay, so as usual, dpackage, build package, put the source package in the parent directory, and we have a DSC and a .git. That's and a .git file, not a .git directory. Right. And so here's the DSC file. We see right at the top it says 3.0 git, and then everything else is as per normal. And then down it has a package list, and um, only in the checksum section do we see that there's only this .git file included. So, okay, so that. Can you show us the actual git bundle? What is it? Is it a text file? Is it binary file? It's a binary file. So I could, don't know how to, I, I can basically show it to you by cloning it. If right, you, okay. And are there any other tools apart from Git who read the Git bundles? If you look at the format of a Git bundle, like I said, it's the same as a Git pack file. Right, um, okay. There's several programs that can read Git pack files. They're all various implementations of Git. And it is a documented standard, you know, file format with version numbers and all that kind of thing. Um, the git bundle adds a small header saying it's a bundle and a few other pieces of metadata. More questions? So that's pretty much it for the demo. Um, uh, we can, like I say, now when you unpack, I mean, when you unpack a source fi form file, you don't really care anymore, right? You have the directory, you have the working directory. And in this case, you also have the git history which I guess we'll discuss in a minute, that's actually the main weakness of this uh, format as well, is that we really have um, the complete history here. So um, I don't know if that's readable, but you get the idea that no FTP master, even Ansgar, who sort of likes Git, is going to be willing to review that. And this is actually not a huge history. Uh, it has a thousand, I don't know if you were counting, but there's a thousand commits there, um, which is a smallish Git history. I mean, so I, I think plenty of projects in Debian have in the range of 30,000, 100,000 commits in their history. So clearly something, well, clearly looking at every one of those commits is not viable. We have a question. Um, what makes the magic prompt that tells you which bit you're in? That looks really useful. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's actually, um, it is very useful. It's uh, ZSH, and I think I stole this from Martin Kraft originally. So it's, it's, it's one of those, yeah, it's, not, it's more or less off the shelf ZSH. Um, Jet Blatt still seems to take some configuration, but it's not that hard. Uh, question up front. Uh, question, question regarding the Git bundle format. Does that encode any sort of references to external repositories? As, and this kind of leads into the next question about shallow branching. Um, as far as I know, it does not. I have to admit that I don't fully understand the Git pack format. But as far as I know, Git packs don't do that. And Git bundle only adds um, some refs that are included in the bundle so that when you unpack it, it knows what refs to create. Right, so I mean, obviously the ideal would be if, if there are concerns about not having the whole history in the bundle because of having to review everything, then the ideal would be you just have the tip and you include something that actually points you to the right place for all the history or to multiple right places for all the history. My incomplete understanding is that this is essentially an upstream missing feature in Git, is that shallow clones are not as nice as they could be or should be. I'm 
Any other? Okay, so I think that, that, that Ian. So uh, we're, the, the reason we're using shallow clones is because we don't want um, the entire history in the archive because the FTV masters don't like it. However, we already have, in general, the complete history on Alioth, um, where apparently Alioth admins are completely happy with it. Um, is there anything stopping us from somehow treating the archive as a output format, output location, and um, not having to have all this pain? So you might be jumping ahead to line nine, oh. which is totally fine. Oh, you want to answer? I mean, I'm not quite sure what you meant by treating the archive as an output format, um, but I think that you have a good point about Ailey Authority having, you know, the, generally the full history, upstream history of every Git repository that we've pulled in, um, and there probably could be licensing issues with what's on Ailey Auth. I think it's just that we're not shipping it to quite the same degree that we are, and the FTP masters are, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't think we're shipping it quite to the same degree that we do ship Debian source packages. So that might be the only dividing line. Um. Well, Elliot can also, well, we, we don't distinguish between main and contrib on Elliot. So when there's non-free but distributable files, yeah. I think that would be okay to have on Elliot, but it should not be in the main archive. I, I guess I could mention, um, since the FTP masters did bring up this, you know, concern which I hadn't really thought about, um, currently my best approach to trying to deal with this, which I haven't tried to implement yet, is to um, instead of just having a shallow clone that say has you know the most recent commit or something, you can make a uh, series of um, branches basically, each of which has a Debian release. So. You can have the last ten releases or something like that, and you'll have you know you'll have a snapshot of each of those available in your Git repository in the bundle, and um, then if you need to deepen that, you can pull from Alioth or something. But that's not implemented. I uh, I think it's probably the blocker as far as I'm concerned for getting this in. I don't know about the FT masters. Is there a pristine tar integration, and can I regenerate the upstream tarball from the Git bundle? Uh, maybe I could answer that. It's just another Git repo, so uh, sure, anything you can do with a Git repo, you can do with this thing. On the other hand, the reason, think about why do we have these upstream tarballs and why do we use them? Well, it's to it's, verify it, what we got from upstream. In the case of a lot of these Git repositories, what you get from upstream is a Git repository with, if you're lucky, some signed tags on it. And so that's, that's a major reason to want to use this format in the first place, and you won't have a pristine tarball. Yeah, I understand, because for me, it's not necessarily that the developer can get the original tarball, but that you can actually get it from the Git source package from the Git bundle, because one nice property of the Debian mirrors is that it's mirroring upstream software and upstream tarball releases across the world. Where they do exist, and they're becoming much less frequent if you look at, say, Rails stuff or, okay. you yeah. know. <laughs> that, of course, one can question <laughs> the sanity of some. Anyway, never mind. No, no. I can't hear me. I was going to say, there's sort of two things going on here. One is this notion that as more and more upstreams move to rational distributed revision control systems like Git for doing their base work, then the nature of the problem we're trying to solve changes, and that's certainly true. Though I believe today that in my own set of Debian packages, a very small percentage of the upstreams actually themselves use Git. And I don't always even notice when they change to it. And then, you know, there's the whole kerfluffle about figuring out what to do, <clears throat> how to resynchronize my work with theirs and all of that sort of thing. Um, but it also strikes me that, you know, we've had this mechanism for a while for capturing VCS entries in control files. And, you know, some combination of capturing information there and what we actually have to put in the file. It, it just seems logically like it ought to be possible to come up with some suitable as Joe was saying, maybe it's, maybe it's you know, we're, we're, we actually do the Debian 
package building on specific branches for each Debian release or something. I don't know. It seems to me like we ought to be able to dream up something that resolves this in a plausible way where the rest of the package contains the pointers to where to get the rest of the history. So one thing that occurred to me in response to Dimitri's question about pristine tarballs and uh, Debian being a kind of librarian for the free software world, which I, I, is certainly a positive thing that we do, but I mean, in, in a purely technical sense, we could do that by signing tags as well as by making tarballs. And, and, and for us, when the tarball isn't used in the build process, it seems a bit artificial to, to declare, hey, this is our pristine, we're going to get archive to a tarball and then put that tarball back into the same Git repo. It's, I don't know, without getting into weak hashes yet. <laughs> so I hear where you guys are coming from regarding upstream now distributing directly via Git and tarballs being an unnecessary artifact of what they now consider to be an obsolete distribution mechanism. However, one of the things that seems to be falling by the wayside, and this was a point that I heard Ian making in the Hack Lab the other day where he was trying to check out a, a package git tree and get it to build, and he was running into problems because there was no release machinery in that git repository that would actually give you the autoconf output and you know have something you could actually build as a package because you had the source, which consisted of what upstream considered the source that was checked into Git, plus the Debian directory, and the all the auto-generated files were missing, which in in ha, traditionally we viewed that as, yes, you don't check in things to the repository that are auto-generated, but if you want a representation of an actual buildable Debian source package, you actually should have those in there. So are there any conventions developing around that in your work? And I'm actually interested in this question in terms of like larger usage of, of Git build, build package as well mm -hmm. to make sure that we, when, we, when people actually are checking out things that are Git, there is some obvious consistent way to build the package. So are you answering Steve's question? Yeah, I was going to say, for me, the simple answer is to always have the Debian packaging do the bootstrapping work and build depend on whatever auto, star, et cetera, tools are required to do that. Um, I've actually been doing that by adding another um, target to my Debian rules files, which is, you know, the, the configure target. And um, other folks I've seen are doing the same thing. And this sort of insulates you from all that. And it sort of guarantees that when you do a clean, you actually flush away all those auto-generated things. And when you do a, a, when you do the build process, and it, pre it depends on the configure having you know, completed and generated a stamp, then you kind of get that whole bootstrapping thing captured there, even if it's not captured by the upstream folks in their sources. Yeah, I guess there are people sort of for and against auto reconfing, and I guess the one point of view, which was sort of diverging from the topic, but it's somehow related too, as you mentioned, because it comes up more often in and it's building from version control. So the one point of view is you introduce variation into the build process when you don't ship configure exactly as generated by autoconf version zero that upstream is using or whatever. Um, I, Ian right. has a question. I, I, I have a, a, an answer to this, which <laughs> is we don't need to have one answer to the question of should you do this and we're never going to get one answer to that anyway. What we need is either for the thing that you get by checking out to have all of those files in it so that they're pre-generated and they're not regenerated when you build the package, or the rules file does it for you. Right. And either of those is sufficient. Mm -hmm. So Ian, it, but is this a question for Debian packagers, or is it a question for upstreams, or both? Yes, um, but we're, upstreams seem to be doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Right, um, so we have, have different to be ideas thing. about these things. Um, we, at the very least, have the benefit of being able to declare a standard interface to a package. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we don't have a spec for what it means to be a standard Debian package in version control. 
Right. So it's not possible to get a package from something that you expect to be a version-controlled Debian package and build it because you might have to run some weird script. It might be on a weird branch. There's all sorts of strange things that aren't sorted out. So, so th this is actually the last item, and I'm ha I don't care about the order. I, I'm glad you asked these questions because I had no idea what the point of this item was in the, in the agenda. So. Um, some people are using readme.source for this kind of thing, although it's technically not what it's for. Okay, so, so uh, I don't think I can relay Vdale's question, comment there, which is that th that's a terrible idea. Um, so do we need a readme. No, it needs to be automatic. Okay, yeah, that, that seems reasonable enough. Yeah, that could I, I even be policy. Ian had it right. Either the source package, when unpacked, is ready to go, or the rules file does the bootstrap and takes care yeah. of it. Sure. Well, for a 3.0 Git uh, package, this would be the case, because basically what you get from the checkout is what the build demons, for example, will use to build the package. So it will either have to have the configure files or rebuild them on at build time. So to the best of my knowledge, there's not currently a DH1 built system that recognizes how to do the right thing, um, which might be a good idea for, for facilitating Debian rules doing the right thing for a majority of packages that are in this scenario. You mean for configure files? Uh, I mean that, uh, that DH should know how to run, the DH underscore auto underscore configure should recognize a git tree that has no, that has, a, for instance, a configure.ac but doesn't have any of the, it doesn't have a generated configure script or whatever and should know to do the right thing so that people aren't, once again, in, this, in the situation of putting lots of, of um, readily automatable uh, build logic into their Debian rules. Um, it's not in Deb Helper per se, but I think that DH auto reconf or something like that does do this, it's a sequence add-on, so it's one, you know, with autoconf or something like that in your rules file. Seems relatively clean, although a little messy under the hood. So, yeah, so I just wanted to comment that, that I'm a huge fan of the not shipping all the auto... Not shipping all the autofoo in the package, because it just means you get ancient versions of autofoo which have all piles of bugs. We fix a lot more bugs by redoing it than we do by keeping the old version, even though that's kind of how the auto stuff was designed. I right. think it's a bad plan. So this is, this is just great. So more discussion about, yes. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, I had all kinds of trouble for a long time with Emacs and that sort of thing, and things got much better when I switched to Can not. you speak up? Sorry. Uh, in Emacs, I had all kinds of trouble with that kind of thing for a long time, and things got much better when I switched to not shipping any of the pre-built uh, um, you know, auto-foo files. And to your earlier point, in DH, you just I just create well, one line override for I think it was DH auto configure or whatever, which invokes either auto regen or auto recon or whichever one's appropriate. So. so um, any more discussion about shallow histories and what what? I mean, so one thing we didn't talk about, which some people I know feel very strongly about, so I'm a bit surprised there's been no yelling, is that, well, Dimitri sort of mentioned it obliquely, which is that, okay, this thing you handed me, which you told me was a source package, I need Git to read it. And um, for some people, that is much, much worse than needing tar and depackaged dev to, well, to, to read it. So I, I, I don't really feel that way myself, but I want to sort of throw that out there because I know uh, I've been yelled at that way before. So anybody here want to take that point of view or, or expand on it? Well, I have in the past downloaded Debian source packages with curl. You're really yelling very quietly. Okay. How about this? Better. Um, I really did download packages from Debian Archive on Solaris machines and then trying to build them because 
that was the only way to get a package and I knew how to build the Debian package quickly and get all the correct dependencies. So I did use it on a non-Debian machine just purely as a source repository. But I mean, Git runs on Windows, so. Well, true, sort of. but not on Solaris 7 or whatever it was. Okay, so, so it is a narrow, you're saying it would be a restriction. Yeah. I, I, I can agree with that. I would say that a, another possible, you know, devil's advocate um, reason to worry about this is what if in 10 years we're not using Git anymore and we have all these Git source packages? Could happen. Um, I think that it can be managed. So, firstly, I'll just come back to what the, the point there about Solaris. I don't think that we should take that as one of our goals. Um, and Debian format source packages have never been intended to be unpickable on anything other than Debian. Um, the real reason to be wary of Git format source packages is that the Git user interface is a catastrophic disaster, at least for some people. And it's not so much that you have to install some tool. You always have to install some tool. The problem is that you might have to use it. Um, mm -hmm. If all of that can be buried in something that means that you don't need to understand how it works, you don't need to understand its data model and so on, then I think a lot of that objection would go away. Yeah, I mean, I hate Git because I can't drive it, but um, like you say, if all you have to do is dpackage source dash x and you don't care whatever the hell happened, then I don't think that's a reasonable objection. But That, yeah. that might have been the most important part of my demo then. <laughs> I think Steve has a question. Well, it's not so much a question as, I guess, a follow-up comment that, so, for instance, the 3.0 quilt format is handled internally by dpackage, and I guess I'm, I'm surprised that this is a, uh, something we're going back and forth on, because I would expect that if this is something we're going to use in the archive, that dpackage itself would implement that in some capacity without relying on external tools, um, because you don't want, I, I would expect, I don't know. I guess that's, some, that's really a question for the dpackage maintainers about how they would choose to implement that. But certainly you wouldn't want dpackage-dev to not, upon installation, give you everything you need to work with any source package in the archive. So whether that's a dependency on Git that it shells out to or um, some sort of internal re-implementation of Git, uh, I would expect it to be transparent to the user that dpackage-dev is the interface you need to worry about, and that's it. Sure. Um, I, as I say, I'm devil's advocating, and um, no, I think the point really was about use outside Debian. So if you don't care about that, then we can move on from, from that point. Um, are there really no questions from IRC or, or rude remarks or songs? Okay. Funny jokes? Okay. Hi. Um, regarding the non-Debian users uh, who may, I mean, by GPL uh, license, uh, they should be able to get the source in an easy way. I don't think Git is an easy way for uh, non-Unix platforms, even though it's possible to get uh, Git on Windows, I agree. Uh, for instance, uh, if you ever had to get a PDF uh, or some documentation or some font from Microsoft, and I probably, I guess you would have been very upset to have to get some strange MSI file or CAB file to get your PDF for your. So I don't think we should. Uh, we should make it easy for non Debian user to get the source of our packages. It doesn't mean it. It could be HTTP with something. Sure. Or, I mean, I I guess this is the argument, and and Ian doesn't care. He's maybe going to tell us so, but. And I think we have git.debian.org to also make that access available as well. Right. So the argument being made there was, as far as I can make out, partially based on licensing. And um, I don't think you could make a plausible argument that almost whatever format Debian chose to use was not a format conventionally used for software interchange. So essentially, whatever format we use will satisfy the legal requirements. That's not the issue. The issue is, do we think this is an important thing that we're supposed to be doing, or should we try to make our own workflow smoother? 
And at the moment, what we have is we do have a version control system. Debian Archive is a version control system. That's how we use it. It keeps multiple versions of things. You can commit to it by uploading, all that other kind of thing. And it's a catastrophically awful version control system. It's really absolutely terrible. I prefer it to SVN. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, 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 I've never used SVN. I think that's entirely plausible. But, <laughs> um, but really, we, in this day and age, there's so many better tools available. And we are making our lives extremely difficult by battling with these terrible tools where it takes you, sometimes it can take you half an hour, an hour to get from I've got the name of a package to now I've got it building and I just want to make my change. And then having done that, made your change, tested it, you've got to spend another half hour wrestling with the crazy system to let you commit, push, whatever your change is. When people outside, you know, our crazy bubble, these, you know, these are trivial operations that take minutes. We're wasting so much time. Okay. Um, well, I think we, we have more comments along those lines. Oh, question from IRC, maybe? Um, yes, there was an opinion brought up by Bernhard Link. Um, he said, um, well, Debian is not only about participate, uh, Debian is about participating in free software, so we should care that other Linux distributions are able to see what we do. The, the, it's, I, it's sure, than, it's a comment, and yeah. I, I agree with that sentiment. I don't think anybody here thinks we should somehow make it harder on purpose. On the other hand, I'm a little skeptical of this argument that there are Linux distributions that can't use Git. And if so, I pity them. I mean, I, I, okay, I know that Git is not everybody's favorite tool, and it is far from perfect. Uh, but on the other hand, it, it's becoming kind of basic literacy. In, in, in my, and I know people find, the people who dislike Git find that even more upsetting, that, that, that Git is becoming a de facto standard and you kind of can't work in free software. I, I know people that this drives literally irrational, um, angry, but uh, there it is. Uh, so I don't know that that's such a big thing. Anyway, I, it's not, I felt like we should bring this up. Maybe we have five, seven minutes left. So I don't know what you guys want to talk about for this. There's another opinion uh, from IC, um, from the same guy, uh, that he's trying to look for patches in other distributions and to have to use different VCSs and different branch naming setups is quite a hell. Yes. Right. So I, I really sympathize for, with Git haters whenever I have to use BZR or HD or SVN or right. I mean, it's mostly familiarity. Hello. Um, I know you probably have seen seen me around. I'm from Kanaima Distribution. Uh, we kind of have set Git as a default for our packaging in Kanaima. Uh, all our packages are tracked by Git. So it, we benefit uh, from it uh, in a great way. Uh, we simplified the, the way we, we make change logs but with Git D, DZH. Uh, we also uh, participate or contribute uh, or help contribute to Kanaima by uh, basically showing the things we do with the, the commit diff. Uh, I, I just want to say that it's a magnificent tool and uh, we, we have that experience in Kanaima. So I'm happy to keep discussing or I can do another demo. What do you want? Discussion is somehow more valuable, I guess, so. Uh, 
so I'd like to go on record as one of the Git haters. Um, I, I really do think that the Free Software Committee community has mi missed out on, on an opportunity to standardize, standardize around uh, VCS with a much better UI, that being bizarre. But given the fact that everybody has a standardized around Git um, because it happened to have the right advantages at the right point in, in history, um, I don't have a problem with there being a Git source package format in Debian. And the reason for that is very simple. It doesn't matter. The interface, as a, as a Debian developer, if I'm going to be working on somebody's package, the interface that I'm going to be using is the same. I'm going to be using the package. The fact that there's additional information there that happens to tie into the version control system that the maintainer would be using, whether they have this package format available to them or not, is immaterial to, to the, the kinds of interactions that I, as a, an NMUer, would have to have with that package. And as long as that's the case, I, I'm happy for there to, to exist a 3.0 Git format. Okay. Thanks. Actually, I think I had forces Git on you a bit because you have to commit your changes with Git. Or, well, except that uh, dpackage, build package, or source or whatever now has dash dash commit, so you have you use that as a version control system, abstracting over this anyway. And I think Ian had a really good point about it being a horrible, horrible version control system, but it is the one that you use if you don't, you know, want to dive into the details. Right. So um, I think Steve's hit the, the nail on the head. There will always be people who don't want to use a new tool. And in an organization the size of Debian, we're not going to be able to just say, everybody must switch over to some new workflow. Those of us who have tried the new workflows and have rotated our brains at 90 degrees to reality to cope with the Git user interface, now find that those new workflows are much better. So what I want is I want to be able to have a Git workflow and I want Steve to be able to have his Deepakage workflow. And if he wants to spend half an hour wrestling with Deepakage when I'm typing git clone and commit and push, <laughs> that's absolutely fine by me. And what we need is a set of tools that means that both of us can get what we want in a standard way without having to run bizarre scripts, not know where to find the source code. It should all be automatic, standardized, and neither of us should have to do extra scut work the computer should be doing for us. And at the moment, I think, unfortunately, our tooling is considerably short of that. For example, we're going to have to have build the source package from a git push, which we don't have, and that's a bit of a political problem as well, but it is an important thing that will need to be fixed, and until we fix that, the, you know, you, you're missing half of the workflow. Um, so one thing I've noticed a lot more recently since the 3.0 format is things that you can't build twice. Um, and I don't know whether heading in this direction is going to make that problem much worse. Um, I've, I've, one of my packages doesn't, and I'm not quite sure what to do about it because it's tech craziness. Um, and I don't know, something definitely we should worry about is files that get changed by the build in place and then it all goes wrong. It's don't build in place? <laughs> How do you make tech not build in place with the source files? Can you do that? And that's just an example. Lundir. OK, so we're, we're veering off. And I think we have like zero minutes left. We could probably sneak one more question in without further angering the video team. Who wants the last question who's not sitting in the front row? Another question from IRC. Um, Yaroslav asks about, um, is it preferable to carry pure Debian Git repositories, i.e. imported tarpors and Debian on top, or maybe original upstream repository plus Debian branch? Can you repeat the question? Um, whether it is preferable to carry pure Debian Git repositories, I um, import the tablos, tablos plus the Debian subdirectory on top of that, or maybe original upstream repositories plus a Debian branch. I, I don't know what's preferable. I myself do both. 
Um, I find that the second option, if you don't care about resource consumption, is probably the good one. But someone, uh, so cherry picking upstream patches with Git is great. And I think that that, that is so, and if that costs 100 megs of disk space, I'm okay with that. Um, but the alley auth admins aren't here, so it's safe to say that. So I, I guess we should stop. Um, thanks, everybody. That was a really great, lots of interaction, and uh, that was, that's what you want for a boff. And, and uh, no anger. Well, Steve's a little bit angry about the fact that BZR lost, but yeah, it's okay. Okay. All right.